And next up, we have James Keeft, uh, who's uh, come over from uh, Reading, I believe, and he's got some uh, things he's going to share with us. He's using a really nice tool um, called PictoChart, uh, which uh, I, I tend to use for infographics. We can also use it um, like he has uh, to make really nice looking presentations. And that's what he's going to be talking about, video tools to use with your students. Over to you. Excellent. Thank you very much. So, um, are we on? Uh, is the light on? Hope you turn it on. That's better. I think we're, uh, we're there. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm going to rattle through some video tools. Um, I like coming to these sorts of events and um, giving people lots of tools that they can take away. Hopefully, some tools that you may not have heard of before. And I'll throw in some ideas on how I think they could be used as we go through. So um, first one. Um, it, it, our role as teachers, uh, especially in further education, still is, is uh, and all, all uh, levels, is the development of English skills. Uh, and encouraging students to write and, and practice and develop those English skills can be a challenge, especially if the only thing that we assess them with is an essay. So my simple show allows them to type in their text. Having typed in their text, they, they can... Um, it types into text, they... Uh, it, the machine scans the text and suggests images that it's got available in its library. And then having done that, it uses the text that they've typed for their voiceover. And that's the bit which tests their English. Because if they haven't put in the correct punctuation or the spelling, it just reads out a series of words. So my simple show, really quick and easy to use. They add the text. They've got sections with character limits, so they've really got to think about the structure of the text and the information that they're writing. It scans the text, it suggests images. They can alter those images or upload their own images. And then it provides a voiceover. So my simple show, really nice, easy one to use and a great way to encourage students to check the content. Now, there's a wealth of content out there. Our job uh, as educators isn't always necessary to create new content but is to create content that is already out there. Check123, another free browser-based service, allows you to pull together video playlists, but instead of having to search YouTube and look for hundreds of different ones, they've already categorized their videos into categories for you. So you can just search for the videos uh, looking at the categories. So a very quick, easy way to pull together a playlist um, and then potentially um, share that with your learners or as Ollie was suggesting, maybe get the learners to be doing the curation. So they're picking out the videos that are most appropriate to illustrate the point that they're looking to make. So that's check one, two, three. Talking of video playlists, I'm sure most of you are familiar with YouTube. YouTube, a uh, very powerful tool, very easy to create playlists. But there's some other content available on Vimeo. Vimeo seems to be more for the user creator, the arty types of creating their arty videos, but there's useful content there. With Hazaz, you can create a playlist that has both YouTube videos and Vimeo videos. And the great thing is you can embed it into a website so it looks like this, and it'll play the video sequentially without playing the adverts in between them. So even if there's adverts, it won't include the adverts. And it looks quite nice. You can customize the image that it displays within it. So that's Hazaz. Video can be quite a useful tool for um, doing assessment. With mobile phones being a plenty now, it's very easy to capture video. But when it comes to, to assessing and giving students feedback, that becomes more of a challenge. Now, we can obviously have a Google Doc and then time stamps in the Google Doc pointing to the, the various points within the video where we want our comment to make. Or we could use this site, VideoAnt, it allows you to put in comments that are mapped to specific points in the timeline. So as they click on the, the time, they click on the comment, it jumps to that specific point in the video so the student can see which bits you're commenting about. So that's video and a great way for providing feedback on video. Going back to, to YouTube, Great tool, but it also can be a distraction because depending on what you've watched previously, when you bring up the video you want to watch, alongside it will show all of the suggestions, like maybe it's the football or it's who got kicked out of X Factor or whatever it may be. So very quick, simple site, nicer tube, allows you to take your YouTube URL, post it into a plain background, and then reshare it with the plain background URL 
so the students can watch the video without having the distractions of all of the other things that um, it's suggesting are either trending or they've watched previously. So that's nicer tube. Um, Moot Note, very similar to Video Ant, it's allowing you to add that annotation to your videos. So another way it could be used, sometimes there's really useful content there, but we don't want students to be passive in watching the video. We want them to engage with it in, in a more active way. So potentially you'd ask them to watch the video and pick out key points relevant to the topic you're covering. They could do that within Moot Note and then they could share that with you and you could see how they've engaged specifically with the video at those particular points within the timeline. So another one, we're going through a pace because I was determined to get as many tools into this presentation as possible. Um, so we're almost at a close. Um, another tool, this is an app for iOS. You can, um, on the paid app, I think it's about three pounds. Again, if they type in their text, it will do the voiceover for them. So it's a great way to get them to be conscious of their English. It's also really useful, we found it really beneficial, the LLDD students, the students with learning difficulties, some of them don't feel confident standing up and presenting, but if, if they pretend they're a character and they're, they're in the third person, they're quite happy to put a voice in the character. You can amend the appearance, the gender, the ethnicity, and you can then drop it into a background and it gives them a little video talking. So that, I'm going to, oh, there's more. How, how are we doing for time? Uh, one more. One more. One more. Uh, video Scribe, similar sort of thing. It's, an, it's, uh, it's available as an app for iOS. You can um, add your text and your images, and it navigates all the way through. Um, and again, it's a different way of creating presentations. So to finish, I'm going to skip through. Um, I run a blog, lots of ed tech tools, mainly free, browser-based. Um, and there's a YouTube channel on how to use them. So, hope you find that useful. Thank you very much. Brilliant, thank you. And uh, follow James on Twitter as well at James underscore Keith. Got lots of great ideas. He's a great person to follow. So, thank you very much indeed, uh, James.